It was 1944. Germany was losing the war. The Allies had landed in France and were pushing the Germans back towards their own borders. Italy had fallen the year before and also since 1943 the Soviets were pushing the Germans back on the Eastern Front. Yet the Germans kept fighting this lost war till May 1945. Why did Germany keep fighting the Second World War? That's what you're gonna find out today. Hey, welcome back regular viewers. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. My name is Stefan. I'm hustling history for you. And if you liked it, please consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell so you'll become part of the hustle. Fighting until total destruction. That can be said for Germany in the Second World War. While German cities were flattened by aerial bombardments, German soldiers kept on struggling against their enemies. While it was totally clear they were losing the war. Why didn't they revolt? Why did not something happen like in 1918 when there was a German revolution? Now some of you might say that's because the German soldiers were indoctrinated by the regime. Others say that it was out of fear of reprisals. Well, there are many reasons why the Germans kept fighting till the end. I'm gonna explain all of them. So watch this video till the end, because I might tell you some aspects you had never thought of before. Early 1943, the Allies demanded a unconditional surrender of Germany. By that time, the German 6th Army was surrounded at Stalingrad. See, this was the very first essential threat for the Third Reich. Why? Well, because an unconditional surrender implies that the Nazi leadership would have come to an end. So for the party elite, it meant their reign would come to an end if they surrendered. So basically, it was either victory or death. It was all or nothing. Yet, yeah, this does not explain why soldiers kept fighting a lost war. See, from 1944, reports showed that support for the party was dwindling. Now, it is very hard to determine the popularity of the regime in a totalitarian state. See, there were no public opinion polls because you could be prosecuted if you spoke out freely against the regime. Now, even reports within the party show that many German people were sick of the war. Now, do note here that we have to make a distinction. See, many people might have been sick of the war and wanted the war to end. They still did support the party. Others were against the party, yet they supported the Fuhrer. Now, we have the benefit of hindsight. We can look back and say, well, the war continued because of the party and there was a party because of Hitler. Back then, many people had different thoughts about this and had their own motivation to go on. Let's take a look. In October 1944, the Soviets entered East Prussia and were now on German soil. They took control over a village called Nemersdorf. A German counterattack drove them out. When the Germans retook control over the village, a few days later, they made a horrible discovery. The German field police who arrived later to find out what exactly happened reported 26 bodies. Mostly old men and women, also a few children were among the dead. Most of them were shot in the head. Two women were assaulted and looting and arson had occurred. Now, for the German propaganda machine, it was kind of hard to determine what to make of this. See, obviously, this showed the Soviet atrocities that had taken place. So, yes, these stories could have been exploited. However, bringing this news to the people also implied that the regime had failed to protect its own people and that the Soviets now entered German soil. Now, eventually, outrageous horror stories in German propaganda appeared and therefore it is kind of hard to determine what exactly happened at Nemensdorf. How cruel were the Soviets? Well, Ian Kershaw, who wrote the book The End, said about this the following. Whatever doubts are raised about the actual scale of murders and rape, and necessary though, it is to remember the nature and purpose of the propaganda exploitation. The atrocities were no mere figment of propaganda. 
terrible things did happen in and around Nemensdorf. When Soviets took control of German towns in the east, many men were just randomly shot and women and girls assaulted, sometimes by a whole series of soldiers. Knowing this, it boosted morale for German soldiers to carry on the struggle. If it wasn't for the Reich, then at least it was to defend their homes and their people. It was kind of fighting for heart and home. And this was for many German soldiers a motivation to carry on the fighting. The German apparatus did its best to keep everyone in line. Since February 1945, the German terror was directed internally instead of externally. German citizens that complained out loud, they could count on harsh repercussions. And however, the German citizens proved to be sick of war and showed war fatigue, they did not revolt. And this was the result of living years and years in a totalitarian state. But what about the German soldiers? Why didn't they revolt? Many German soldiers did know their country wasn't able to win the war. The constant promise of German wonder weapons to turn the tide weren't believed by many. And some soldiers deserted. But this came at a costly price. Death. Since March 1945, flying martial councils roamed around the country to arrest, trial and execute any suspected deserters. German General Ferdinand Schoerner was one of these hardliners who supported this. As a firm loyalist, Schoerner took a hard stance against deserters and encouraged the executions. He had deserters hanged with a sign that a soldier who had deserted had refused to protect German women and children. Now what we saw here were also many dropout soldiers. And what is a dropout case? Well, that was a German soldier that in the fog of war lost its unit and now wandered around aimlessly. Now, can you consider these men deserters? Well, perhaps not intentionally, although many German soldiers might have faked their dropout case in order to escape the fighting. And also these men could count on harsh repercussions. And by internally applied terror, I also mean those who suffered in the concentration camps. Because as the Allies drew nearer towards the German Reich, the German concentration camps were mopped up. Inmates were killed off or were forced on a death march in the severe winter cold. Many of these people died in the last months of the war. Germany was attacked from the east, from the west and from the air. The Reich was shrinking by the day. Yet, despite under being immense pressure, the system did not collapse. And this is also due to the efficient system of bureaucracy. Civil servants, high and low, stayed on their posts. For example, till April 1945, wages were still being paid out and mail was still being delivered. Now, these civil servants did not stay on their post out of loyalty to the regime, but more out of loyalty towards the abstract concept of the state. And therefore, they sustained the system that was being under immense pressure but did therefore not collapse. Another aspect that should definitely not be overlooked was that many lower and middle class officers proved devoted supporters of the regime. See, as the war progressed, Germany lost more men and thus more officers. Now, these officers had to be replaced by younger officers. And these were mostly the men that had served in the Hitler Youth in the 1930s and were severely indoctrinated. Therefore, these officers played a key role in motivating their men to carry on the struggle. But what about the high-ranking generals? I mean, sure, there must have been 
generals who had a common sense who saw the war was lost and were not willing to let the country and its people go down in flames. To explain that we need to discuss a pivotal moment and that occurred on the 20th of July 1944. Then an assassination attempt was made on Hitler's life following by a coup attempt in Berlin. The name for this operation was Operation Valkyrie. The details of this plot will be explained in a future video. Where it came down to was that the resistance movement within the German Wehrmacht tried to eliminate Hitler and seize control of the country. It failed. We can only speculate what would have happened if the July plotters were successful. Perhaps they would have signed a peace treaty with the West and carried on the war in the East. Or perhaps they would live up to the unconditional surrender. And perhaps another stab at the back myth would have been born. Perhaps a civil war would have occurred. But these are all what if scenarios and these are beyond the scope of this channel. Now what we're going to look at now is what were the results of this failed July plot. Well, I can tell you these results were tremendous. A part of the fact that these July plotters were arrested and executed, among which Klaus von Schaffenberg, it led to a purge in the high command. Therefore, generals who proved to be skeptical towards the war effort were replaced by hardliners. This was a key reason why the war was dragged on for so long. Because now the people in the top were only people who were willing to fight till the bitter end. And this radicalization worked itself from top down to bottom. This radicalization was also intertwined with Goebbels total war ID. In February 1943, Goebbels held a speech in the sports palace to a carefully selected crowd who were asked if they wanted a total war, yes or no. And we see this with the establishment of the Volkssturm in 1944. The Volkssturm, which was established in October 1944, consisted of men that weren't conscripted yet, between the age of 16 and 60. The Volkssturm itself had been born the previous autumn out of Nazi ideology and petty power struggles. Hitler's suspicion that the army's leadership was both treacherous and defeatist made him determined that control of his mass militia should be kept out of its hands. Since almost all German males between 17 and 45 had already been called up, the Volkssturm was an amagan of teenagers and the elderly. Most of the time there were no uniforms for these men and they had to do with a simple armband. When it comes to down to weaponry, Brit Butter wrote the following about it. Equipped with a mixture of Russian rifles, German light machine guns and Panzerfaust anti-tank weapons, these men now prepared to face the feared Bolsheviks. Now obviously this military formation proved worthless and prolonged the war and therefore the human suffering. A total war couldn't be more total than this. Or perhaps it could. Another element of Germany's total war were the stronghold tactics. By declaring major cities in the east like Budapest, Königsberg, Danzig and Breslau to so-called Festungs, it meant that these cities had to hold out till the bitter end. Civilians and forced laborers were called up to work on the fortifications. In East Prussia, hundreds and thousands of people were put to work to establish the so-called Eastern Wall. But Eventually, these preparations proved to be drops in an ocean. The tactic of fortifications already proved unsuccessful in Russia because the Red Army moved around the stronghold. It ensured major destruction and human suffering and prolonging the inevitable. One of the most insane battles was the Battle of Königsberg that took place in East Prussia. The city was largely destroyed during air raids in the summer of 1944 and now besieged by the Soviets from January 1945. The final assault took place on April 1945 and left 90% of the city in ruins. 
the Soviets would later annex it and rename the city to Kaliningrad, which till this day is a Russian city. And so the war dragged on. And the longer it dragged on, the more insane it got. Between July 44 and May 45, more German civilians died than in the years before. Many died in the aerial raids. Did you know that most Allied bombs were dropped after July 1944? The Soviet invasion of the Eastern Territories led to additional civilian deaths. Around half of the military losses were suffered in these last 10 months of the war. A total of 5.3 million men of the 18.2 German military personnel died over the course of the war. Till July 1944, 2.7 million were killed. In the last 10 months, an additional 2.6 million were killed, of which 1.5 million was killed at the Eastern Front. Towards the end of the war, around 300,000 to 400,000 men were killed in action each month. The German people now were fatalistic. The only thing they could do was keep their head down and pray there would not be a bomb landing on their heads and that the Americans would be there to liberate them rather than the Soviets. And this brings me to the most important reason why Germany fought till May 1945. And that was because of one man, Hitler. Hitler proved to be very stubborn and rigidly. He did not want to surrender. He wanted to keep fighting till the bitter end. He did not want to have the same disgrace as in 1918 with the disregarding of the human suffering it ensured. His buildup of a totalitarian state where all forms of collective leadership were rendered non-existent over the course of the 1930s laid the groundwork for this collision course. Hitler's rigidity excluded all other options. This was enlarged by the fact that he was supreme commander of all armed forces. Those directly below him never broke with him. Göring, Himmler, Goebbels, Bormann, or realized they had to do so too little too late, like Albert Speer. And the other German elites, they lacked the collective will and means to resist the collision course of their Fuhrer, which basically ended after Hitler took his own life. However, between Hitler's death and the actual end of the Second World War in Europe, there's another story to be told, but that is a story for another time. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. Thanks to my patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Henry Clarkson, Cooling Castleman, the president, Michael Nosek and Wombat Cookie. If you want to support me, go to the link right here. If you want to know more about the last battles that were fought, you can click right here for the siege of Breslau and here for the battle of Berlin. I want to thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. See you later.